It was exactly 10 years ago that a TV channel was born that changed the way we look at news forever. Arise News wasn't just another TV news channel. It was from the start conceived as the way for Africa and Nigeria to take its place as a major player in world events. And it did that by setting a new agenda, the world to Africa and Africa to the world. It had never been tried before. I'm Leila Johnson Salami in Lagos, Nigeria. We're looking back at 10 years that put Arise News front and center of what was happening in the world. And a lot was happening. In this first of two programs, we're looking back at the big stories, the landmark interviews, and the eye-opening coverage that Arise brought you in the first five years of life. The striding our world like a colossus, the end of the Nelson Mandela era, how we reported his passing, his funeral, and his legacy. We get an inside view on our exclusive coverage of the shocking Chibok kidnappings, a story that still brings pain to families even today. And we look back at the world leaders and famous faces who have appeared on Arise News. That's ahead, but first, let's look back to the 31st of January 2013, when Arise News first came on air, beginning in studios in London and soon afterwards New York, from the very start, the global vision reached far wide and deep. Welcome to Arise News Hour on our very first day, January the 31st, 2013. Each day we'll be bringing you the latest global news focusing on the people and the parts of the world that don't always get fully covered on other networks. Malian troops in the north of the country are hunting house to house for Islamist insurgents. Tom Walsh is the Arise News East Africa correspondent. He joins us now from Nairobi. Tom. Joined now live here in the Arise News studios by the Nigerian High Commissioner in London, His Excellency Dr. Dalatu Saki Tarfida. Doctor, welcome to Arise News. There's growing evidence that the nerve agent Sarin has been used in Syria. Assad has lost his legitimacy to lead. Well, joining us live from Washington is our correspondent, Malcolm Brown. The death toll is still rising in Bangladesh, three days after an eight-story building collapsed. Well, Edward Snowden's fate seems increasingly dependent on whether or not the Kremlin will let him leave the airport. Well, let's get the details from Moscow now with our reporter, Daria Bondarichuk. Uh, so what's the latest? Well, next week, Barack Obama will visit Africa on his first full trip to the continent as US president. Nelson Mandela's condition is now critical. Reporters wanted to know only one thing. How was Madiba doing? Nelson Mandela used 67 years of his life fighting for equality in South Africa. Madiba's moral courage, this country's historic transition to a free and democratic nation uh, has been a personal inspiration to me. It has been uh, an inspiration to the world. Time is running out for Mohamed Morsi. There's now less than two hours to go until the Egyptian army's deadline passes. Muslim Brotherhood leaders are calling for a million people to take to the streets in Egypt the day after 51 died in protests against the removal of President Morsi. The first pope to resign in 600 years. Could the next pontiff be the first black pope and an African? You're watching Arise News Hour. Uh, so my immediate thought was, what's, what's happening here? And I don't think we've heard the whole story. I don't think that popes wake up one morning and think, I've had enough, I'm going to resign. The gold medal winning Paralympic star Oscar Pistorius sat in court in South Africa 
charged with murdering his girlfriend at his home near Pretoria. You're watching the Arise News Hour, our top story tonight. You're watching the Arise News Hour. You're watching the Arise News Hour. You're watching the News Hour here on Arise, our top story this evening. choices can make a difference. Joining us now is the founder and chairman of Arise Global Media and the This Day Group, Prince Unduka Obaibana. Lovely to have you in the studio, Thank sir. Thank you very much, Leila. Now we're in 2023 and Arise News has pretty much become Africa's premier news channel. Is that what you set out to achieve 10 years ago, though, sir? Well, we set out to be a global premier news channel from Africa, not Africa's premier news channel. So the journey is still far. And there was a pandemic, a global war, and lots of change in Nigeria. What would you say, looking back over the past few years, are the plus and minuses of the news and events that we've seen as you take a look back? Well, things are changing. Lifestyles are changing. One of the most impactful change is technology and how people live, how people operate, drive their news, do their business. So as technology changes, we'll change with it. As you can see, Arise is not only delivered as a broadcast medium. It is delivered across all social platforms. We deliver live on Twitter. We deliver live on Instagram, on Facebook, on Telegram. You name it, we are there. So we are essentially content providers, we are storytellers. We tell this global story from an African perspective. And broadcast medium is a form of distribution, just like social channels. So we we'll distribute across all platforms, wherever it is, whatever it is. And we are always at the cutting edge of technology, because technology drives the world. We absolutely are, sir. Let's speak, though, as well about the editorial values of Arise News. What would you say those essential editorial values of the channel are? Our pursuit is of free enterprise. Our pursuit is of social justice and justice. And our pursuit is of freedoms. So we let our journalists tell their stories from their perspectives defining the agenda, shaping the world, and essentially, we need to tell the African story to the world. We need to shape global events. We need to shape the global agenda. If we shape the global agenda, it will drive in investments to make, it will put the African right on the table. It's a shame that you have the G20 with only one African member. It's not acceptable. But the best way to do it, to put our house in order and to shape the agenda. Certainly. And what would you say you are proudest of when you look at Horizon News now, all that's been achieved in just 10 years, what are you proudest of? Well, I've been proud of our journalists. I've been proud of our coverage. I've been proud of the way we cover the Mandela funeral, having 
all our talent from the US, from the Europe, and from Africa. I've been proud of many global events. I've been proud of how we covered 2015 elections in Nigeria and how we had to call the elections ahead of INEC. We declared Buhari president. I am proud of our journalists. I'm proud of what they do every day, the sacrifices they make, and I'm proud of the journalism we deliver globally. And of course, nothing comes without challenges. What would you say the, the most difficult challenges have been in building a rise over the past decade? The challenge we face is the challenge everybody faces, the operating environment. For instance, if you have a, a global ratings agency, if your global ratings agency, for instance, rates Nigeria B plus or A plus, as an operator in Nigeria, you cannot be better. So we face the challenges of the environment, the challenges like everybody of foreign exchange, because we're a global player, we, change, we face the challenges of resources, but with every day, there's a challenge. And at the end of every day, we conquer. We sure do. <laughs> I think that's one thing that's quite thematic with Arise, being bold and being able to conquer and get, get past these challenges. Let's look towards the future now as well, sir. What do you foresee over the next 10 years? The world will change. Nigeria will change. As you know, we have a population dominated by the young. We have young people who are striving, who are building boundaries, who are becoming global. So we want to produce and support global champions out of Africa. We want to support global brands like the Dangotes, like whatever, out of Africa. I want to show that Africa can be, and Africa can, and Africa will do it. You're watching Arise at 10 our celebration of the first decade of Arise News. The man they called the world statesman, Nelson Mandela, died in early December 2013 at the age of 95. Arise was there to remember and mark the legacy of someone who changed his world and our world for all time by proving that peaceful change is the only change that's worth fighting for. I have fought very firmly against white domination. I have fought very firmly against black domination. I cherish the idea of a new South Africa where all South Africans are equal. Nelson Mandela is now lying beneath the earth in the village where he grew up. He was buried with all the honors South Africa and the world could bestow upon him. Yet his state funeral managed to be intensely personal and full of Tembu tribal tradition. And you join us here in Kunu where the heavens have opened. But uh, as we've been telling you all along, that is actually a very good omen in uh, the Kosa tradition, which it is indeed a blessing. Following this story, uh, as I have, is our Arise News America co colleague, Debbie Turner-Bell. Debbie, what, do you, what have you made of the day? In October 1963, while still in prison, Nelson Mandela was tried for sabotage in what became known as the Rivonia trial. Facing the death penalty, his words to the court became immortalized. I have cherished the idea of a democratic and free society in which all persons live together in harmony and with equal opportunities. It is an idea for which I hope to live. But my Lord, if it needs be, it is an idea for which I am prepared to die.
expanding the system of white minority domination, humanity will have ensured that never again shall the scourge of racial tyranny raise its ugly head. Inside a specially erected marquee, the coffin was placed in the centre of a catterskin and a choir sang. That leadership is about falling in love with the people that you serve and the people falling in love with you. The pomp and circumstance that it takes to bury a great leader is one thing, but that married with the, the Kosa traditions has just been an amazing thing to behold. We're now joined by Arise senior editor, anchor, and special correspondent, Charles Aniagulu. Charles, it's great to have you here because you've been here right from the very get-go, um, actually probably before that. And one of the most significant stories to have covered in Arise's first year on air was the death of, Mel of Nelson Mandela, which of course you were directly involved in. What was that experience like? Walk me through it. I think it's great to be here to talk about this. I mean, I've watched this channel evolve over the years and it's just been absolutely brilliant being part of that evolution. But Mandela, obviously a singular moment in not just African history, but world history. And here we were, an African channel, trying to associate ourselves with all the big stories emerging out of Africa that could help us rise in the ranks of television stations around the world. And, and then Mandela died. And I remember very clearly that announcement. I think it was Heather Scott, who was my co-anchor at the time, who, because she is South African, who ran in and said, you know, it's happened. And then Jacob Zuma, who was the president of South Africa at the time, made that announcement. And obviously, immediately, I mean, apart from the, the incredible loss, you know, we, it was like this, we've got to do this. This is an opportunity to really set this channel and show how far we can go with our coverage. So, um, so it, it, it was a very special moment for our rise. And I think that after that coverage and the quality of the coverage, people started to look again at this channel and you know arise literally means africa rising i mean most people don't know that but that's where it comes from so we in some ways almost personified the new africa and nelson mandela's death was our way of announcing to the world that we were not only going to be at the very pivot of those kinds of developments but that those kinds of developments were synonymous with what we were trying to be, which is a singularly top quality African news channel that competed with the best of them around the world. So it was a very special moment that we had done this. This was the first big international challenge for us as an international channel. And there was no way you could have seen Arise's coverage and doubted that this was an international news channel. I mean, we ranked with the best of them, unquestionably. And Arise News editorial director Nick Jennings was actually in South Africa for Madiba's funeral. He joins me now from the UK. Nick, What's your memory of covering that historic moment for the channel? And I was there with a small team of Arise people up against the whole uh, world media. It was such a big event. There were crews there from all over the globe uh, wanting to record this historic event. Um, I remember standing at the rain-soaked Soweto Stadium for his uh, final 
for the for sort of final uh, appearance in front of the, the the people of South Africa, and then the following day we drove about a thousand miles south to his own village of Kinu. It Kuna. It, it was an incredible story, probably the biggest story of the year, and certainly one of the biggest and most memorable stories that I've covered. And in fact, all the more poignant for me because 23 years earlier on uh, in February the 11th, 1990, I was standing outside Victor Vorster prison outside Cape Town when he was released. In the dead of night on the 14th of April, 2014, a dusty little town in Northeast Nigeria was sleeping when Islamic terrorists drove in and kidnapped nearly 300 schoolgirls from their dormitory. The town was Chibok. Soon, everyone in the world had heard of it and of Boko Haram. Only Arise was able to send a news team to see the school and find out how this happened. This is where most people's trip to the northeast of Nigeria begins and ends. Maiduguri, the capital of Borno State. The popular name used to be Home of Peace, but these days it resembles a fortress. The airport boasts it is one of the best fortified in the world, but it was just the beginning of our journey to find some of the lost children of Chibok. We're about to get aboard the Nigerian Air Force helicopter that's taking us into Chibok, where the first international television crew to visit the scene of Boko Haram's most audacious attack. The helicopter ride gave us a good idea of how remote the terrain is and how easy for Boko Haram to strike then disappear into the empty spaces. So many conflicting reports coming out of Chibok about what actually happened that night. Our hope is that we'll get to the truth of this. Yet, the one thing they never tell you about Chibok until you go there is it is, or was until very recently, just any small town. It's home to about 10 or 11,000 people, most of whom turned out to smile at us as we drove into the centre. We were the first international TV channel to get completely free access to the school, and the devastation was clear everywhere. We're in one of the dormitories where the insurgents came in and abducted the girls. You can see the wreck. I mean, these are the actual beds that the girls slept on. Around 11 p.m. that night, the insurgents arrived dressed in military uniforms, came into the dormitories and said to the girls that the, that the town was under attack and that they were there to rescue them. They took them all out into the quadrangle, assembled them there, bundled them into their vehicles and drove them away. They then came back, the insurgents, and raised the school to the ground. So we are sleeping in the room and we are, we are hearing the, the gun so that we, f we come out and we sit in the in, in outside so that we are sitting and, and the, all the staff they run and they leave us in the school. Staggeringly, she and her father said teachers had locked them in the night Boko Haram came calling. The teachers ran away and left them alone. There are signs of the abduction everywhere. The kidnappers burned everything to the ground, perhaps to terrify the town, perhaps to destroy any clues. We found poignant reminders of school-age innocence in the rubble. Soap and toothpaste containers and a multiplication table. This school, which has become the center of the world's attention, could have been any school almost anywhere. But the children, the daughters that are adopted, that is my pain. How do you feel now that the world is aware of what happened here? So I feel so fine that the world knows what is happening and they will come to our rescue, to assist and rescue our daughter back to us. It was time for us to leave. Night was falling and we'd already attracted attention. Since 14th April, this little town gets taken over by whispers and fear when it's dark. We flew out of Chibok, a town still in shock, in a region so difficult to police and secure, 
and with a ruthless insurgency. And Charles is still with me in the studio. Now, Charles, the coverage of the Chibok kidnappings, one of the most tragic stories in Nigeria's recent history, was Arise News' first global exclusive. And you were the first journalist on the ground in Chibok at the very school where the girls had been taken from. What was that experience like? Yeah, I would say that it was a seminal moment, but, but also I was the first reporter because, I mean, I had journalist Rob Bynan with me. I had journalist Jerome Evans with me. But in terms of being the reporter, I was the first reporter um, who was their international reporter and, and to bring it to international attention. And, and that, was, that was another great moment in the evolution of Arise News. I mean, here we were going into an area that was completely cordoned off from the rest of the world. I mean, the story, a lot of people didn't actually know about the Chibok girls and what happened. It was just that we sat down and editorially decided that this is a big story. I mean, these are, you know, school children. It doesn't matter where they are. Anybody around the world could viscerally relate to the fact that you know, these were school children, school girls. I mean, you know, it, 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 it told a very important story. Two very important things emerged. One, that girls could, that the security situation in Nigeria had deteriorated to the point where young school girls could be abducted in such large numbers. But also, secondly, it spoke to the growing power of the Islamist insurgency in this country, that this, the audacity of it, you know, that this could happen. It was like almost comprehensively kidnapping people. It wasn't just a kidnap. I mean, they took their time. And so when the story came to us, I mean, there was no question. We had to not only do it, but be there. But Importantly for Arise, this was yet another opportunity to show that we were at the cutting edge of the biggest stories out of Africa. And certainly Nigeria, the, the biggest sort of African, most populous African country. And so the decision was made. We had to get the cooperation of the army. We had to get the protection of the army because that area was a hotbed of insurgency. I mean, you had them all over the place. But so it was a big risk. You know, are you guys going to do this? Yes, we are. So we, we fly to on a private jet because there were no flights to Maiduguri. That's how dangerous it was. We took a private plane to Maiduguri and then had to wait for the army to give us a military helicopter to fly to Chibok. And we had to fly over the danger zone because all across that area, Boko Haram were there, and they were fully armed. So you, here you are in a, in a helicopter, and you're wondering, is the bottom going to drop out? I mean, but we got there, and we were able to talk, to, and you could feel the pain. I mean, that was another sort of extraordinary moment. You could feel the pain of the relatives, and I mean, they were confused. They were like, what's going on? We're not, you know, this has happened to us the world doesn't know about this. The government doesn't seem to be interested in this. So we took the story. Great filming. Jerome did, did the filming. Great production. Rob did the production. And I did the reporting. And we packaged it. And before you knew it, everybody, everybody wanted a piece of that. From all the big news international agencies, Reuters, the Associated Press, the uh, Agence France Press. And then the story started to filter out from that. Everybody was quoting Arise News everywhere. CBS News in America, the BBC in London, CNN, everybody. And then suddenly here's, you know, Mrs. Obama with Bring Back Our Girls. And I mean, it became a global phenomenon, if you like. And that's the kind of thing that Arise was trying to do, and that's the kind of thing that Arise succeeded in doing.
Nigeria's general election is just weeks away, and despite all the pressures and accusations, the democratic process has held so far. A rise is committed to the freedom to vote and the freedom of the media to cover our politicians and the elections. That's what's always been at the forefront of our election coverage from 2015 to now. Hello, good evening and welcome to World Briefing. Elections in parts of Nigeria have been extended until Sunday after delays and a number of attacks. Large crowds gather in Nigeria's capital, Abuja, waiting patiently to vote for their chosen candidate. After their man was confirmed as the next president of Nigeria, the party hasn't stopped for President Muhammadu Buhari's supporters. <laughs> carnival atmosphere in Abuja as supporters wave brooms and sing songs. But how long will the feel-good factor last? Nigeria's Electoral Commission ratified Buhari's win at a ceremony in Abuja, where he set the priority for his presidency. What has never happened in Nigeria's history was confirmed in the early hours of Wednesday morning. A sitting president voted out democratically such change had always come through the barrel of a gun, but this time they did it through the ballot box. Fears of vote rigging and intimidation did not materialize, barring a few isolated incidents. As dusk fell, President Jonathan telephoned General Buhari, extended his congratulations and conceded defeat. Observers say Mr. Jonathan's name will forever be etched in the annals of history as a hero and a statesman. Well, just before dawn, the Electoral Commission completed the final count and confirmed the news reported by Arise Television almost a day earlier. For Nigerians to participate in the democratic process, that is one legacy I would like to see and deal. The violence that marred the 2011 election has so far been avoided. With a war against Boko Haram insurgents still underway in the northeast, Nigerians will hope the peaceful vote can set the tone for the years to come. As Arise News' reputation spread around the world, some of the biggest names in politics and international affairs appeared on the channel for exclusive interviews. Some came on to be held to account, some to explain the news and their role in it, and others just appeared for our entertainment. I know that it is a continent with great potential. Africa has to take responsibility for its own destiny. We have to take responsibility for our future and the welfare of our people. We have great potential and time, our time has come. Gordon Brown, welcome to Arise Television. A pleasure. Your new role, UN Global Envoy for Education, has been a tough challenge. Well, there are 61 million children who are not going to school. It's outrageous in the year 2013 that so many children will never go to school. Many of them are working uh, full time. Some are girls who have been married at 10, 11, 12. Uh, some of the victims like Malala, Yousafi in Pakistan of uh, discrimination against girls. Some just have no teachers that uh, are there to teach them. And we've got to ensure as the first chance that a child has uh, that they've got the benefit of a basic education. President Clinton's helicopter touching down today in the grounds of a school in Abiokuta, southwest Nigeria. Once the most powerful man in the world, still one of the most influential. Clinton was attending the This Day Awards, organized by Nigeria's This Day newspaper, a partner of Arise News, to celebrate the achievements of the nation's educators. If I look back, I keep on saying I wished my parents were alive to see such a level of my development. It has been a very difficult uh, undertaking. But we closed the borders, we stopped smuggling, we asked Nigerians to grow what they will eat and eat what they grow. Coming up in a hot second, the amazing, prodigiously talented, red-hot John Legend. Stay with us.
you know that the devil is a liar. Arise News launched a few days after former U.S. President Barack Obama was inaugurated for his second term, and we followed the first African-American presidency very closely, not more so than when the Obamas came to Africa in 2013. The highlight of the trip was the visit to a prison cell on Robben Island off Cape Town, where Nelson Mandela had been incarcerated. The American President Barack Obama heads to Africa this week in Senegal. Many are hoping Obama will use the visit to beef up trade relations between Washington and Dakar. Barack Obama has landed in Dar es Salaam. It comes after his first trip to South Africa as president. The first family visited the House of Slaves, a fort built in the late 18th century as a transit point for human traffic. Obama and his wife Michelle stared out at the Atlantic Ocean through the door of no return, the last exit for slaves bound for the new world. Touchdown in Tanzania as President Obama lands in the third and final country of his African tour. On Sunday, the Obama family visited Robben Island and the cell where Mandela spent the majority of his 27 years in prison. Barack Obama. Speaking to students at the University of Cape Town, Obama told them not to underestimate their potential. Your ideals, your willingness to act on those ideals, your choices can make a difference. On a previous visit to South Africa, Obama declared, I have the blood of Africa within me. For many eagerly anticipating his arrival, those words will still hold enormous significance. And Charles, you accompanied U.S. President Barack Obama on that historic visit to Africa, a pivotal moment and key coverage for the channel. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think the word is historic and pivotal. The words are sort of both uh, capture the, the, the moment very well, but also uh, it was a less ponderous moment because, I mean, you've got to remember that we'd covered quite a number of big international stories um, that were coming out of Africa, the death of Mandela, the you know, kidnap of the Chibok girls, and they were all very sort of sad. But Obama's coming to Africa was like a, a this you know, great champion returning to his home. I mean, because he, he was literally the first African-American president. I mean, he, he was half African, so it was a very significant moment, but also perhaps more so because we were working with an African channel and we were bringing that story in a uniquely African way to the people of Africa and not just the people on the continent, but people of African descent in the United States. A lot of African Americans opted to watch Arise News because they wanted to get that home turf coverage but that sense that here we were at the very you know the the at a very important moment in not only the history of the united states but perhaps more significantly the history of africa um because it was coming full circle from you know the africans being transported from the continent to the united states to now an African-American president returning to Africa. I mean, it was a, an extraordinary moment. And, and you had to find a way to journalistically bring that point home to the audience around the world. And that's what we tried to do. And it's not just the big names that we've had on the channel. Arise News has been at the forefront of storytelling, producing countless award-winning programs and documentaries. From our award-winning wildlife series, Go Wild, to feature documentaries and special programming. But there was one award that tipped them all.
Well, needless to say, this is a very proud day for all of us here at Arise News. We have been honored with an Emmy Award presented at a gala event in New York City last night. The recognition is for our documentary called Game Changers, How the Harlem Globetrotters Battled Racism. Let's take a look at an excerpt. We put the fun in the game. They're not giving us the recognition that we would have gotten because they're not publicizing us. They're publicizing the NBA. Of course, they don't play this happy type of fun-making game all the time. When hard-pressed, they can play the game straight and fast in championship form. Well, the way basketball is played today is Harlem will try to style that they now call Showtime. Competition, they were the top attraction, but paid less than those they played against. Eager fans would line up for autographs, but wouldn't let them into their restaurants or hotels. They were sent as America's ambassadors to the Soviet Union, but treated as second-class citizens at home. They were the best of the best. They were the Harlem Globetrotters. And they were not playing the white man's game. We started the three-point shot. People said it wouldn't work. Heck, we were slam dunking before it was fashionable. Before people knew what slam dunking was, we did that. When you look at the NBA today and you see how many people of color are playing, it's hard to realize that go back 20, 30, 40 years, the NBA was an all-white league. And if you were black in this country and you wanted to play professional basketball, the only way you can play it would be on a team like the Harlem Globetrotters. Well, congratulations, Chairman. Of course, you must be very, very proud. Well, of course, we are very proud of the w good work being done across the network by all the people of Arise News from New York to London and across Africa. It's a proud moment. It's a first step. It's a groundbreaking moment. In February 2013, Arise covered shocking news about a South African sporting hero, the Paralympic sprinter Oscar Pistorius had shot and killed his girlfriend Reva Steenkamp at his home in Pretoria. Arise covered the news and the extraordinary legal wrangling that ended with Pistorius being eventually convicted of murder and jailed. He could be out on parole this year. My job is to run. There's no race where I haven't envisioned coming out on top. Some people think that sprinting is about being free. I think it's probably the opposite. You can run and rather run yourself into the ground literally than give up and go slower. How do you plead? Not guilty, my lady. You killed her, you shot and killed her. This is what you, you really come to do. My job is to run. South Africa is a country of multiple personalities, all of them extreme. And Oscar Pistorius is absolutely a man of extremes and of multiple personalities too. He's lost everything. He was an icon in the eyes of South Africans on what he has done, what he has achieved. He was denigrated to the extent that all that was left was a rage killer, a cold-blooded killer, a liar, and everything that's horrible. The trial of the century, a story that gripped South Africa and the world for months. The superhuman Olympic star who killed his girlfriend and destroyed his life in a moment of madness on Valentine's Day. South Africa's favorite son, the double amputee who beat insurmountable odds to become the Blade Runner and win worldwide acclaim before destroying himself with a flaw in his character. 
The prosecution and defence spent hundreds of hours combing through the evidence in a televised trial that became a media circus. Thousands of newspaper articles poured over Oscar Pistorius' character, his private life and his past. From the moment we came on air in 2013, Arise always believed that news goes far beyond politics and the economy. So we've brought you the ultimate fashion and entertainment news with the biggest names and the greatest events. Welcome to Arise 360, Lupita Nyong'o. You're a darling of the red carpet. What's it feel like to have Vogue declare you its it girl this month? <laughs> and to have fashionistas, fashionistas falling over themselves to dress you? I, it's thrilling, you know? Mm -hmm. This is um, an area that I didn't plan for. And what's becoming very obvious to me is that fashion is art. I love our job, <laughs> Yeah, it is a great day. I know. <laughs> Our next guest is an international superstar and one of the greatest female vocalists of all time. Alicia Keys, welcome. Thank you. Alicia Look Keys. amazing. Thank you the lovely. braids are back, as Lola said. Hashtag braids are back. The braids are back. He's <laughs> one of the most celebrated rappers in hip hop, ruling the charts with hits like Holla, Holla. <laughs> you right. like that? Holla, Holla. Ja Rule in the yeah, house. Yeah, holla, know, holla. What's that, what's that, uh, Thanks for having me on, y'all. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for having me here. For How sure. are you? I'm good. You look good. You look great. Lola, I just want to say I'm so... Ooh, excuse me. Give it a claim, family. Here we are. I'm so happy. I'm like, oh my God, man. I, I, I haven't seen you in so long, man. This is great. The 1988 classic, <laughs> Coming to America, where That's Cuba right. Gooding Jr. made his film debut. Cuba. Okay, How thanks. much fun was that moment? Y'all got me looking like Stoney Jack. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cold movie. Yeah. You rocked it, though. You rocked it. Thank you. Neo, yeah, welcome yeah. to the show. Hello. Welcome. Okay, so Neo, how many jobs do you have? Right. My goodness. Oh, You're a singer, a songwriter, an entrepreneur, an executive, a uh, philanthropist. A dad. And a apparently dad. a saint. Yeah. And, and a saint. Yes. I do what I can. You're tired of that same old Thanksgiving dinner with turkey and cranberry sauce. Try spicing up your meal with a little Caribbean flavor. I like yes. that. Ooh. By joining us with his sizzling spin on holiday supper is Chef Mark Anthony Bailey. Together, they're one of the hottest couples in Hollywood. They sure are. Here to talk about everything from adult toys Ooh. to podcasts are Coco and Ice Tea. Welcome to like Thanks for having me. Thank yes. you. And you brought company with you. Yes. We brought the whole family. Yes. Yes. That's yes. King Maximus right there. That's the son of Spartacus. Spartacus is taking the low route right now. Oh, what yeah. bulldogs do. Oh, Five gosh. seconds as hard as Five. you can. Oh, you gotta go really fast. And one. Woo. All right. I feel yeah. it in my that arms in there. and my legs. I feel that in my quad. Full body. You've been watching some of the highlights of Arise News on its 10th birthday. It was a decade that started with terror and the death of a statesman, and ended with a war and a pandemic that changed everything for everyone. What we've learned and how we've covered it all. Join me again for the next Arise at 10.